I welcome you to the lecture number two of quantum computing. Uh, in this lecture, we will learn about quantum bit. All the speedups of quantum computers are possible because of the characteristics of quantum bit. Quantum bit is known as qubit. So let's start uh, from the classical computers, the boring computers that we're using these days. Basic uh, unit of data on classical computers is called bit. A bit can store either a value of 0 or a value of 1. In contrast to that, we have quantum computers. In quantum computers, we have quantum bits. We call quantum bit qubit. A qubit can be in two different states. It can be in a classical state, which is known as pure state. In a pure state, qubit behave exactly like uh, classical bits. So it can have a value of 0 or 1 in pure state. As compared to that, qubit can also be in quantum state known as superposition. In a superposition state, qubit can have a value of 0 and a value of 1. So we can say that qubit will have a value of 0 uh, with probability p and it has value of 1 with probability 1 minus p. So now let's see how we can write qubit mathematically. So our random qubit cat psi is equals to alpha times cat 0 plus beta times cat 1, where alpha and beta are amplitudes of qubit. And alpha and beta are complex number that can even take negative values. So we know the basic definition of qubit and we know alpha and beta are complex number. So question can be asked, what is the probability that qubit will take value 0 and with what probability qubit, qubit will take value 1? Probability of 0 is equals to square, root, square of alpha and probability of 1 is equals to uh, square of beta, where alpha square is defined as alpha conjugate times alpha. Similarly, beta square is defined as beta conjugate times beta. So we know that the sum of probabilities is always equal to 1. That is why alpha square plus beta square is equal to 1. This is called normalization constraint. Let's look deeper into qubit and understand what normalization constraints mean. So first of all, we can write um, cat psi in a vector form. So maybe write cat psi as cat psi is equal to alpha times, and we know cat 0 is equal to uh, a vector whose uh, 0 signification has 1 in it, and the rest of them is are 0 uh, plus uh, beta and we know that cat1 is a vector whose uh, first location has 1 in it and rest of the elements are 0 
So let psi is equals to a vector whose zeroth element is alpha and first element is beta. Normalization constraints um, inform us that this vector is a unit vector. It implies that the magnitude of this vector or norm of this vector is equals to 1. Ideally, we have to write a square root here, but we can eliminate square root because um, if this number is uh, 1, only then the square root will be 1. Let's do an example to understand qubit clearly. So in this example, uh, I'm given a, I have given a vector cat psi, which is equals to uh, minus 4 over 5 iota times cat 0 plus uh, 3 over 5 times cat 1. And I have asked if uh, this vector represents a valid qubit. I have also asked uh, what is the probability of cat psi equals to 0. And what is the probability that we get 1? So solution to solve the part 1, I can employ three different methods. I can compute um, normalization constraint which is alpha square plus uh, beta square equals to 1. I can compute norm. Uh, so norm of this vector cat psi must be equals to 1. And because the norm is 1, so uh, the dot product of the vector with itself must also be 1. So I'm going to use uh, this method. Uh, so alpha is minus 4 over 5. So I have minus 4 over 5 iota uh, whole square uh, plus beta is 3 over 5. So I have uh, 3 over 5 uh, whole square and this must be equals to 1. So minus 4 over 5 whole square is basically uh, conjugate alpha conjugate times alpha so conjugate of alpha will be 4 over 5 iota the sign of imaginary number is change uh, times uh, minus 4 over 5 iota plus and once again the 3 over 5 whole square will be 3 over 5 uh, times 3 over 5 this time we don't have any imaginary number and the result will be um, 16 over 5, 25 plus 9 over 25 and that is equals to 1. So um, uh, cat psi represents a valid qubit. So yes, it is a valid qubit. So now for part 2, I have to find what is the probability of 0? Probability of 0 is equals to alpha square. So it is equals to minus 4 over 5 iota square and we know that this is equals to 16 over 25 and which is equals to 0 0.64. Now probability of 1, we can compute probability of 1 by uh, subtracting uh, 1, uh, by subtracting 0 0.64 from 1 uh, but we can also compute probability of 1 by taking beta square which is 3 over 5 whole square and that is equals to uh, 9 over 25 equals to 0 0.36. So, so far uh, we have only dealt with a single qubit. Uh, what about the multiple qubits? So, let me clear the board and then we we'll talk about the multiple qubits. Let's assume that I have given two qubits. I've given a qubit um, cat psi which is equals to uh, minus 4 over 5 iota times cat 0 plus uh, 3 over 5 times cat 1. And I've also given uh, cat phi uh, which is equals to uh, cat 0 divided by square root of 2 plus cat 1 divided by square, square root of 2. And now I want to combine uh, these two qubits. To combine these two qubits I only have to compute tensor product of them. 
So tensor product also preserves the norm of the resulting vector. So to combine them in a single register, I can say that cat psi tensor product with cat phi. And I can also write tensor product in a single cat notation by just uh, writing the both of those uh, symbols in the right order. So tensor product of cat psi and cat phi will be equals to uh, minus 4 over 5 iota cat 0 plus 3 over 5 uh, cat 1 tensor product with uh, cat 0 over square root of 2 plus cat 1 over square root of 2 and the result will be uh, this time uh, this basically tensor product of these two um, entries that will be minus 4 over uh, 5 square root of 2 uh, and cat 0 0 plus uh, this time this that will be uh, minus 4 over 5 square root of 2 and times uh, 0 0 and then this time this uh, that will be plus uh, 3 over 5 times square root of 2 and 1 0 and then this time this which is uh, 3 over 5 times square root of 2 uh, times uh, 1 1. So that is uh, the combined uh, qubits. So now we have instead of two, two separate qubits we can have a register that has both of those qubits. So now the uh, normalization constraint is changed because now we can we have four values. So this is alpha, this is beta, this is maybe gamma, and this is delta. So uh, these uh, coefficients are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and the normalization constraint will be that uh, alpha square uh, plus uh, beta square plus gamma square plus delta square must be equal to 1. So some of the all the probabilities must be equal to 1. We can also find probabilities of individual outcome. By the way, this was not 0, 0, this was, uh, this was uh, 0, 1. So uh, probability of uh, outcome 0, 1, 0, 0, so probability of uh, 0, 0 uh, will be equals to uh, alpha square. So that will be uh, alpha square that is equals to uh, minus 4 over 5 iota. Uh, we also have uh, uh, square root 2 here. And that will be equals to 16 over 50. And that is equals to 0 0.32. Similarly, we can find uh, probability of outcome 0, 1. We can find probability of outcome 1, 0. And we can find probability of outcome 1, 1. So now we know uh, that we can combine qubits and we can have multiple qubits in a single register. The second question can be asked that what kind of operations we can perform on qubits. So operations on qubits. There are two kinds of operations. Number one, we can measure qubits. And we, we can fully measure qubit, we can also partially measure qubits. So in the next video, I will talk about full and partial measurement. So we can have full measurement and we can have partial measurement. Second operation we can apply is that we can uh, transform qubits using quantum gates. So the idea is that I might have a different set of qubits. Maybe this is a Q1 and this is Q2 and this is Qn and I give those qubits as input to some quantum gate and I get output some qubits. Maybe I have combined some qubit, I have uh, transformed some qubits, I have done some operation on some qubits, so I, I can have output some other qubits. And maybe outcome also have some other garbage bits. So we will learn about the quantum gates in detail in one of the uh, one of the lectures. But in the next lecture, let's first talk about the full and partial qubits, partial measurements. So stay tuned. See you next time.